film and music have one thing in common. The two happen in time. To, I think to, to write music is to, to put yourself in the place of the, these characters. La musique au cinéma, c'est l'invention. Il faut être informé d'un musicien. Il faut, il faut aimer le, 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 le film à la, à la folie quand on le fait. Steve and I used to call it the emotion lotion because the music it gives the, so the soul of the picture. Because of my sort of obsession with music, certain soundtracks would really stand out for me. The, the soundtrack to Midnight Cowboy, for instance. John Barry, um, one of my favorite soundtracks, one of the most influential soundtracks um, ever made. And also the soundtrack to Once Upon a Time in America. Morricone, you know, it wasn't just a soundtrack. It was like, a, it was buying an album, you know. The movie didn't matter. Uh, you know, when you listen to these soundtracks, they were just incredible pieces that survived purely on their own on their own merit i started listening to soundtracks and i realized wow you can buy one soundtrack like say i don't know lalo schifrin or quincy jones eh? and you can hear within one record you know a rock cue a jazz cue an orchestral cue to me it was like one of the most eclectic listening experiences that i'd ever had a moment on a on a fait air ça, ça a coïncidé au moment où il y a eu de la place pour euh, la musique, euh, je dirais, instrumentale. Hein. Et donc on a pu de nouveau euh, faire appel à ce vocabulaire de la musique de film euh, à travers euh, des groupes comme Party Shed et, et, des, et des... quand tout ce mouvement-là est devenu à la mode. Et je dois dire que la, 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 le sampling de Isaac Hayes, de, de, de John Barry, euh, tout ça allait dans ce dans ce sens de faire redécouvrir la musique de film et que les gens écoutent ça chez eux sans le film. I think even in the 50s it was starting to change. Uh, you know, the old guard, like the Max Steiners and the, you know, uh, uh, these kind of guys, even the Elmer Bernsteins were starting to, starting to uh, 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 die out. But, I mean, even Elmer Bernstein, I mean, come on. Uh, uh, yes, he's considered, I guess, an orchestral composer. But look at the man with the golden arm. That's a jazz score. <laughs> Quelqu'un qui était jeune et qui avait un bagage classique, qui voulait s'exprimer à travers la musique, pouvait avoir un, un... la modernité, c'était le jazz. Je pense qu'il n'y avait pas d'autre alternative. the use of jazz. It was a, uh, Henry Mancini, Peter Gunn in television was a big uh, opening of another road. The thing that I liked about film music is that there didn't seem to be, the, it, it was polluted already. When I discovered it, uh, it, it was polluted, meaning, I mean that in a good sense, 
I mean, there were all sorts of influences. Like even on an early uh, Bernstein score, you can find a bossa nova cue or, a, you know, uh, maybe a twist or, a, you know what I mean? Uh, they were using the idioms of the time. One of the things that I love about sort of film music is it's kind of, it's structure, you know? There's no kind of, you know, it's not your classic sort of song structure. It's so fragmented. There's so many layers to it. The categories never bothered me, never. Even when I was very little, uh, we had to play everything, you know. Uh, the white dance, uh, uh, the, the, uh, dinner music, we played rhythm and blues, played strip music, we played shadishes, Jewish music, uh, Debussy, uh, everything. It's a terrific range of, of expression that you're having to work with. I mean, it's really... It opens you up. It's, 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 and you're, you're interested in that, and you're interested in making it different. A musician, he doit être capable, vraiment, d'avoir l'éventail total de toutes les musiques possibles. No canteiro de obras, o tamanho de Belo Monte também impressiona. Os engenheiros estão contentes. It's about tension and release, really. If I had to boil it down, it's tension and release, dissonance and, and consonance. Uh, you release it or you keep people uptight, you know, on the edge of their seat, you know. It, it can affect you very strongly, you know. Just seeing uh, an image that looks very harmless, the music can give it a whole other dimension, you know, can make it sinister, and you wonder what's underneath what you're really seeing, you know. It's a, it's a fascinating uh, experience. <laughs> McQueen was like my brother. And uh, one morning I woke up uh, and I felt pebbles on the window. It was about 10 o'clock in the morning and I looked out front and there was Steve and Ali McGraw, you know. And uh, I know Steve very well, very well, and loved him. And uh, Ali too, Neil, all them, Robert Evans. Um, and he had just finished the picture, it was with first artist, I think. And the artists were in control of their pictures then. Steve said, uh, I've got, we've got a $30 million opening or something like that worldwide, and I need the score in 10 days. You don't have time to think about anything, man. Nothing. Um, you uh, get a movie over the next day, which is a Sunday, and you start spotting the picture, which is determining where the music goes and deciding where it goes, and then you start composing and, and getting, making your, your themes together and so forth. And uh, that's 10 days is not very long. And then you have to orchestrate the, the themes and record the themes and mix the themes. And then we went to Todd at Tadeo, where they dubbed the film, and Sam Peckinpah was on to another film, Billy the Kid or something like that. He was on to another film. So Steve says, I don't know what th this is about, you know. The dubbing is it's no problem. We'll just have a seat and we'll figure it out, you know. Because I was excited because we got a chance to dub a Sam, Sam Peckinpah film. <laughs> Quincy Jones, his arrangements, his detail, the dynamics he creates. I love that sort of aspect. You know, it was all, and it was such, what was great about it was it kind of, you could literally just actually sit and mark the picture out by just little clusters of notes and just little kind of, kind of off-kilter kind of sounds. He was just always interested in, 
you know, bringing new things into his composition, being and it was the whole experimental sort of avant-garde side to him to his composition. You're, you're really painting, you know, in a sense. You're, you're painting colors and and you you are you're jiggling the emotional molecules of the audience, you know. Their, their, their emotions are in your hands, you know. And you, you, you're, you're dealing with the emotions of the film, and you have to make it sound like one piece of organic music. film is a collaboration, it's like a gestalt. The director, the producer, the film, the, 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 the one who writes the screenplay, the cameraman, the director of photography, they call him. All this, they work for one goal, to make a good film, or hopefully. And the composer is part of that team. There's all this kind of interplay between the uh, between the director and the editor and yourself, uh, which is fascinating, and uh, and for the most part, you, uh, they see eye, they're seeing eye, everybody's seeing eye to eye, and when it goes up on the screen, it's 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 it's, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a complete mixture with the dialogue, sound effects, and music, and all going together, and they're all they're all they've all got a point of view. Quand on travaille à des choses intéressantes, on n'existe plus. C'est-à-dire qu'on est complètement au service de la musique d'abord et puis ensuite des choses pour lesquelles on fait, que ce soit une pièce de théâtre, un film, une œuvre. On fait partie de l'œuvre, on n'est pas seul, on n'est pas des musiciens. En tout cas, on est des musiciens avec un grand nom, tout ça. Non, on est humblement, on fait partie d'un ouvrage collectif, collégial. Et c'est ça le plus dur et il faut... Et, 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 et il faut avoir une humilité énorme et une imagination énorme. Michel Legrand, toujours sur le fil, hein, d'aller trop loin. Et puis, euh, je ne sais pas pourquoi, ça fonctionne. Et ce film-là, c'est un film pop, c'est tout, tout dans la jouissance. C'est un qu'on se lâche et on, on, se, on se permet tout. Quand Norman Jewison, avec, avec Halashbi, qui était son premier monteur, Halashbi qui est devenu un, un fantastique metteur en scène plus tard, avec qui il travaille aussi, il me montre l'affaire Thomas Crand, le film faisait 5 heures. Un bout à bout, quoi. Et alors, Hal et Norman me disent, voilà, c'est le bout à bout, euh, on ne sait pas comment le monter. On ne sait pas par qui le bout le prendre. Parce qu'on peut en faire, euh, on ne sait pas. Et j'ai eu cette audace folle qui m'a fait peur après, mais j'ai dit, écoutez, j'ai une idée, je ne vais pas revoir le film, je ne veux pas de minutage, je ne veux rien. Vous allez tous partir en vacances pendant six semaines. Je vais écrire pendant six semaines une heure et demie de musique et moi, je sais sur quelle séquence ça va aller. Et si vous voulez, après, quand la musique sera enregistrée, on va monter le film, on va monter toutes les images sur la musique. Ah, bondissant, oui, génial, formidable, parce que ça va nous donner le rythme, les, les durées, la profondeur. Ah ben, C'est la musique qui va détailler de toutes les images, c'est formidable. Norman Jewis aussi, oui, le producteur, oh non, 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 on n'a jamais fait ça, c'est risqué, c'est Échec. Bon, ben, S'il avait monté sans musique, elle aurait fait 35 secondes. La musique fait 7 minutes 15. Et bien la scène dure 7 minutes 15 parce que la musique décide du tempo, de la durée, de la profondeur, de la légèreté, de la gravité. Et c'est ça qui est formidable.
Alors je rêve par exemple qu'un jour, moi je voudrais faire ça, je voudrais écrire une partition d'une heure et demie sur un sujet de trois lignes et qu'un metteur en scène. Nesta terça. One of the biggest revelations that I had was hearing uh, Morricone scores to, you know, the Leone movies, and then watching how that music worked with the image, and that is what fucked me up. Leone's music, of course, is amazing, but the way Leone used it and the way he wrote, I, I read books about it afterwards, uh, the way that he wrote scenes around the music, let the music uh, be composed first and then cut scenes around the music, to me, I don't know why more directors don't do that. Morricone, I would have to sort of say, you know, he was one of the first kind of composers that I kind of came across that was kind of, was bringing in like natural concrete kind of sounds, you know, whether it was like sort of typewriters, you know, um, prepared pianos, which he was, I know he was very inspired by John Cage, like I am anyway, but seeing someone like Morricone doing that so long ago and bringing that in, I think a lot of, at the time when he was doing that, from what I can gather, a lot of people just thought he was a bit crazy. The Spaghetti Western was a fantastic oeuvre of this, combining the music, sound effects, dialogue, uh, and comedy for us. And so we worked specifically just on, on the Spaghetti Western soundtracks, and particularly the Leone uh, Morricone films that we were interested in, uh, The Good, The Bad and The Ugly, for a fistful of dollars, for a few dollars more, uh, Once Upon a Time in the West. The, these were the films that, that really inspired us. génial aussi c'est l'instrumentation notamment l'utilisation des voix les voix en fait font des font des, des cris des, des espèces de gros crescendo en fait c'est du classicisme et et, euh, et voilà mais toujours bon, toujours cette, cette les harmonies en fait des harmonies très très belles une mélodie très pure en fait euh, certaines aussi font penser à, la, à certains opéras en fait italiens Comment un type comme ça a pu faire ça par rapport à ce dont il se revendique Est-ce que c'est un son grain de folie euh, qu'il n'accepte pas Parce que c'est comme quelqu'un qui aspire à être un compositeur de musique classique. Hein. Et euh, c'est un peu le syndrome Sherlock Holmes, ce que j'appelle le syndrome Sherlock Holmes. C'est Conan Doyle qui, toute sa vie, euh, aura les boules d'avoir été reconnu pour ses, ses historiettes euh, de détectives privés qui, para qui paraissaient toutes les semaines. Alors qu'il aurait voulu être un grand romancier... Euh, et puis Nimoy je pense qu'il espérait être un... Je ne le connais pas, mais 
son, son, son génie n'est pas là où il croyait qu'il était. Est-ce qu'il a fait des musiques de films pour exprimer cette pardon qu'il y avait en lui ou est-ce qu'il a fait pour, financièrement pour, pour gagner sa vie Et comme il pensait que c'était du coup pas important, est-ce qu'il s'est laissé aller à des choses qu'il n'aurait jamais osé tenter dans son propre travail Et finalement, c'est la, la rose à arroser, c'est par ça qu'il a été reconnu. NEO Enya was so successful with the big orchestral sound and uh, the sound effect. Lalo was big, not so much in the orchestra, the, the huge orchestral sound, more the funky sound. I think Lalo is extremely funky. I wouldn't necessarily call Enya so funky. He's more complex than funky. But uh, yeah, that's what's so fun about working with Lalo uh, Schiffer's music. I think one of the things that both Lalo and I got from Dizzy is the importance of rhythm. And I think that's the, the driving force behind, you know, the theme to Mission Impossible. Bump, 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 bump. very exciting and driving. It's not something that, you know, you want to sit down and, you know, relax to. It's something that makes you get up and want to dance or something like that. television in the United States, you write a pilot, the first episode. They don't know if they're going to sell or not. And in the pilot, you have to put the, the main theme, which is like a logo. If somebody is in the kitchen having a, some drink or water or something, and the, in the living room, there's a television set that says, oh, the movie is going to start. Lancini taught me that too. I was writing for uh, Ironside. That, that's who did the pilot, and it was picked up. Uh, I was writing like I was writing for movies, you know, like 16th notes, 44 piece orchestra, and 16th notes, and just too much. He said, Quincy, you will die if you do that, you know, because you finish your score on a Thursday, and they give you a brand new episode on Friday, and you have to score that next Thursday, and next Friday you get another one. You can't do that, you know. You have to find another way to write for television, you know. For some reason, Peter Thomas is kind of frowned upon in the film music community, and I'm not sure why. Um, I thought, when I first heard uh, the Han Patol uh, uh, 60s sci-fi series uh, that he did, I was flat on my ass. <laughs> Angesprochen auf ein Thema, was mich verfolgt, wie, also das gibt's ja gar nicht, aber ich bin nicht böse auf die Verfolgung. Als Kommando Spatial, äh, Kommando Spatial, das ist in Athen und äh, Raum Patrol, die heißt es, äh, in, ich glaube in Deutschland, jawohl, trotzdem ist ein französisches Wort Patrouille, <lacht> die Deutschen, hemmungslos. Und äh, da 
ich noch nie im Weltraum war und die Regisseure auch nicht, konnte keiner was sagen, wie die Musik sein sollte. Und da fing einfach nur an, dass man sagte, man braucht einen, einen Countdown. Also dieses Mal den, 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 den. Und da ich ein Deutscher bin, das hört man ein bisschen pss, pss, eine Preuße, zack, zack. Und back und sehr präzise. Er sagte, es müsste in Sekunden gesprochen werden. Äh, ten, nein. Fünf, vier, drei, zwei, drei, ich bin alleine. Ich komponiere alleine. Ich habe keine Arrangeure. Vielleicht einmal, weil es mal so schnell war. Aber ich kann gar keinen Arrangeur brauchen, weil ich während des Aufnehmens immer sage, wie ich das will. I think that it'd be easy for a lot of Film music, you know, critics or community to look at it as kitsch. And I think that's a complete mistake. Um, I, I don't listen to music that way, you know. Meine Kollegen, äh, ob das Lalo Schiprin oder Michel Legrand ist, äh, das ist der Punkt. Ein, ein Filmkomponist ist nicht spezialisiert auf einen Edgar Wallace oder auf einen äh, Space. Oder was. Der muss eben den medizinischen Film, den intellektuellen, den literarischen Film, das ist, der muss voll durchgebildet sein, full house. Er muss vom Kontrapunkt von, von Bach von dem wohltemperierten Klavier an alle, er muss alle Dinge beherrschen, die man symphonisch äh, begleiten kann oder auch mit einer Milchkanne, die in C-Dur gestimmt ist oder mit, den, mit irgendwelchen Tropfen, die auf einem, mit einer, nehmen wir an, wie der Chopin hat mal das Regentropfen, da, 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 plink, 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 plink. Da muss er wissen, dass er ein Ass ist und muss, man muss alles, die, die ganze Klaviatur des Instrumentieren. Deswegen ist auch wichtig, Arrangement und Komposition ist bei den Filmkomponisten, muss es, wenn es richtig ist, eins sein. like a painter. Orchestration is the painting, the colors of the orchestra. So that's, I cannot explain how I did it. I didn't, I didn't study that with, in, in a music school. I didn't study that with any music teacher. It's, it's an instinct. This is one thing I cannot explain. Like, like Clement used to say, c'est imponderable. And, and that's exactly what it is. I, I, hear, I hear the colors and they come to me. sadness and even elements of the blues because that's the character of a bullet I mean he's it's a very introvert <laughs> Thank you. 
Peter Yes asked me to put music to the whole thing. And I said, that would be a mistake. First of all, sometimes you have the camera in the hilly corners of San Francisco. And there are two cars, the villain cars and the bullet car. And we don't know what car is coming. The, the audience don't know what car is. So by, by letting the sound of the car so the audience should hear what car is coming. Is it a villain or bullet? Ça monte et euh, cette montée en puissance, euh, c'est euh, très sexuel. <rire> Moi, je trouve. If I put music all the way through, it's going to be very muddy, very confusing. Why don't we do a cut off at the, after the hospital chase and all that, and when he gets it's being followed in the street by the car, uh, very slow. The, the traffic is very heavy. And all of a sudden, he does change gears and starts the chase. At that moment, cut off. And that would be a very effective, dramatic moment. And it worked. <laughs> Some years later, I did another detective of the police department. It was Clint Eastwood, Daddy Harry. And believe it or not, these films, they have some many things in common because they both have this psychological element. They are both depressed with the job they have to do. And at the same time, it's an action film. Don Siegel was very, very important. He says that he didn't know any music, but he did know. He, at least he knew the function of music, and he knew how to, he knew how to elaborate and communicate with a composer without talking about music. instrumentation avec des mélodies en fait qui sont qui font le même dessin mais qui sont séparées en fait par des intervalles qui ne sont pas classiques et qui sont quasiment dissonants il y a aussi des mélodies en fait qui sont répétées euh, comment dire à un demi ton de différence etc il y a des glissando et en, en fait à l'écoute moi j'entends en, euh, quelque chose de contemporain en fait c'est quasiment du ça pourrait être en fait un du, un, du olivier messian en fait mélangé avec du jazz en fait avec des bon, derrière des instruments rythmiques euh, funky. Euh. I told Don Siegel, I'm going to use voices. And Don Siegel has done always things like the invasion of the body snatchers and things. He always used instrumental music. 
he was not used to voices. And I said, he said, why do you want to use voices? He said, you set me up. This happened during the Vietnam War, and this mass murderer has a belt with a close-up or the peace symbol. How a guy like that has to be so crazy to have the peace symbol and he's killing people so terrible. And I said, I said to him, he hears voices. In his head, he hears voices. Ainda hoje em grandes personagens brasileiros, o perfil e o humor do cartunista. situations where a director will lead the composer down the, this road and say, this is, the composer says, how about so-and-so, the Nine Trees Dixieland Band? Great, that's a great idea, fantastic. And they get in, they support it, they support it, and it, it, it's being recorded, they say, that's great. They even get up and conduct a few themselves, and then they get into dubbing, and so it doesn't work. Call Henry Mancini, or whoever, or to, call Johnny Williams, that's who they called, you know. And because it's terrifying to think that your, all of your work may be thrown out. Moi, j'étais très ami avec le producteur de, MG, de, de MGM, qui un, un jour m'apporte un, un, un script de Robin et Marianne. C'est l'histoire de, du vieux euh, Robin des Bois, 20 ans plus tard. Et je trouve le sujet, le, le script formidable, formidable. Je dis oui, parfait, je le fais. Et puis, le film fait par le Ster, il est vraiment vraiment sans âme, sans rien et tout. Bon. Je fais une chose, j'amène un romantisme fort pour, pour essayer que les personnages, qu'on puisse y croire, qu'on qu puisse identifier, qu'on soit avec leur amour, tout ça, parce que c'était tourné un peu comme ça. Bon. Froid, quoi, froid, glacé, enfin, comme, comme des mouches, quoi. Et alors, il déteste la musique. Oui, c'est pas ça. Non, c'est pas du tout ça. Ben, je dis très bien, c'est bon, ça. En tout cas, moi, j'en vais jusqu'au bout, puis après, il fait ce qu'il veut. Il est libre. Alors, et puis après, il a fait refaire la musique. C'était une abomination, d'ailleurs. Et le film a fait zéro, 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 rien. Je savais bien que quelqu'un avait été retiré du film. Je n'ai jamais été dans ça. Je ne sais pas. Parce que, vous savez, c'est le producteur qui a décidé. Je ne veux pas dire, bon, pourquoi vous avez été retiré Vous savez, vous avez ouvert un grand truc là. Ce n'est pas de votre entreprise, en fait. Et le fait que ils voulaient vous, ça peut être un peu plus self-centré, mais vous ne voulez pas rentrer dans toutes les all the ramifications of if something has gone wrong, it's gone wrong, that's, that's, that's all you have to know. What I loved about John Parry and a lot of his earlier work was the simplicity of how he would take like one melody and just layer that melody with just the use of di different sort of um, orchestration, different instrumentation. The thing that fascinates me is why some people can't write a melody. <laughs> you know, I'm fascinated by, uh, and I said, why don't you write a melody? Oh, and they'll tell you, say, I, I don't I have a real problem with the melody. And it, it, it's funny, I mean, I think that it's the most important thing. And when I melody, I'm not just talking about da 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 da, not a, a, a melodic instinct. Richard Lester was doing. He was very knowledgeable about music, not just filmmaking. And he was a nice person, listened to things intelligently. You know, he'd actually said, Well, what do you want to do with this? I'd say, I would want to do this. And he said, Fine, you go ahead and do it.
the, the style is the way you do things, the way you approach each story. It, you, you bring a certain style to it. It's your attitude towards how you react to what's on the screen and how you tell the story. And that is a, a broad personality which is difficult to put your finger on. The ways, to, I think, to, to write music is to, to put yourself in the place of the, these characters. You don't look at them, it's not, you're not looking at a movie. You're thinking, now what does that character, he walks in the room, he looks at that woman, or whatever it is. The behaviour that, that, that took part in these movies was the thing. Because this is what, when you write music, you, you've got a deal. So this, this guy's a good guy, this guy's a bad guy, this guy's a chin or she's a wonderful whatever. So you're following all these characters and, and they're teaching you something. They're radiating information <laughs> as artists back to you. John Barry. He said something really, really interesting. When he was a young boy growing up in New York, it was a it was very much like a military base. So during the war, it was just it was just having, you know, the living daylights blown out of it, you know, and he kind of he, he what he was basically trying to say was that the sense of kind of melancholy that is in a lot of his music that he thinks he comes from, from actually his experience as a young boy in the war. And um, my, uh, it really, what was really interesting for me, because I, I, I come from Belfast, and I definitely feel that there's a, a very strong, melancholic kind of feel to some of my music, and I never really knew where it came from. There must be just something that's kind of printed in your psyche that you sort of carry through life. Suicide, euh, cette BO, ça s'est passé très vite, c'est-à-dire que c'était un travail hybride parce que euh, on savait que au montage on, on allait être coupé ou découpé, donc d'emblée, pour perdre de temps, on a voulu faire un, un album autour du film. On s'est servi du film qui, avait des, qui était une histoire très sombre et dramatique de cinq jeunes filles qui se suicident pour. Euh, pour enfin affirmer notre côté mélancolique. En France, euh, à partir du moment où on a fait Virgin Suicide, notre, euh, enfin, le groupe a beaucoup mieux passé. On est, même par rapport à, à nos, nos deux euh, disques précédents, on a été plus accepté et plus reconnu en tant que, entre guillemets, musicien, enfin vrai musicien. There you have it. Oh, it's a very Lalo Schifrin. Oh, right. <laughs> I'm composing for right now for a kind of a crazy action movie. So, you know, the directors want things that are very hyper and very fast paced and, you know, uh, more often than not very rock oriented. So, you know, I can do that. Actually, I can do that with like in my sleep. <laughs> But what I'm trying to do is uh, sneak in uh, some influences that I have and John Barry would definitely be one of them. I think that cue, I don't know if I played you this cue. Here, come here. This cue to me is like like a six note motif that is very to me John Barry. And the main theme kicks in it's like Even the instrumentation. Yeah, 
I would have changed. From Ocean's Eleven, where the music was very much, I'd say, 50% source, um, 50% um, original, we moved on to Ocean's Twelve. <laughs> 